What's up guys, this is Mike Loris with the third and final game between 3D Clan on the Radiant now and Absolute Legends back on the Dire. AL gonna open up once again with the Keeper of the Light because Sindrin apparently could only play the Keeper of the Light. Who knew? Maybe this is why Redefining Madness didn't work because if they didn't get Keeper of the Light then he couldn't play at all. Of course I'm kidding. That is definitely not the truth. I'm serious, like that's not the truth at all. That's not what happened. <laughs> But yeah, so game number one did go to 3D Clan in kind of a steamrolly fashion. The lanes were really weird and the lane choices were really weird from Absolute Legends. Uh, game number two, Absolute Legends were behind for a little bit of that game. However, uh, the Gyrocopter and Luna really, their ultimates didn't come together at the right opportunities and Unicorn on that Phantom Lancer got big enough to tank everything and just win the game single-handedly. That is not to say that the Brewmaster did not play an important role because he was you know, performed very well in the early stage of the game and then his split was really what caused chaos among the ranks of the 3D clan. And AL, they're going to look to make something similar happen uh, with that Phantom Lancer pickup. Keep your light Rubik as well as a PL. The PL worked the last game so you might as well go with it one more time. And we're going to see if 3D, or what they actually have to say about this with their picks. They've, they've already picked up the Magnus, which is a very good counter to the PL. If they could get a melee hero, then PL is going to have a tough Ten time, to say the least. Once Magnus gets those levels, the Empower onto random-ass melee hero, anti-mage, or lifestealer right now, pick up the lifestealer 3D, time. you might as well do it. Then it could work very well for them, because the cleave will do a lot of damage to the Phantom Lancer illusions, and then he will be unhappy. And then, especially with reverse polarity on top of that, uh, Phantom Lancer is not really going to have that much of an opportunity to get things done. However, it is going to be a Shadow Demon pick, so they're going to get their support lineup as well as a late game insurance pick for that Phantom Lancer. If Phantom Lancer gets too big, just disrupt him or disrupt one of his illusions, and then you have your own army of Phantom Lancer illusions. And then you could run around and then push way, uh, push lanes all by yourself while, you know, or all by themselves while the rest of your team is fighting or doing something like that. So Shadow Demon is a very, very reliable pick versus that Phantom Lancer. And, well, kind of fits in weird with 3D Clan's lineup so far. They once again do have that Nature's Prophet. We'll see if it's going to be solo or Sidoi playing the Nature Prophet. Uh, Solo went Nature Prophet the first game, Sidoi the second. And the first game Nature Prophet was a lot more effective, however, I don't think it's really... you can't really just chalk it all up to the player. A lot of it was a situation that they were in in those in each of those games. Hale, just gonna ban out all the carries from 3D. The last one is definitely going to be the Lifestealer, because if it's not, then that is gonna be a little bit silly. Gyrocopter, Anti-Mage, Lifestealer. Then 3D are going to say, hey, well, we might as well pick Luna. So that's what's going to happen, calling it right now, because, well, Magnus does want a melee hero ideally to go with, so you get that extra cleave bonus. The extra damage does work really well if you are a gyrocopter, if you're a Luna. However, uh, you end up losing Ten that cleave, when why would you give up on that cleave? Because the cleave is pretty cool, and Five it's really what lets you remaining. do very well against Phantom Lancer. There's no reason to just completely skip that. Bans from 3D. First, they're going to ban out the, well, I guess Nick Sasson as well as Batrider. Going to go with the Brewmaster as their third ban. Making sure that AL don't get that solid mid lane or, I guess, safe lane. They definitely didn't expect it to be safe lane. Uh, but make sure that they don't have that giant team fight because that is really what messed them up. They really couldn't get their focus correct. And combine that with the fact that the ultimates weren't really flying in the right direction for 3D. They're not going to have to worry about that. And Nigma as well. Looks like they're banning all of these, you know, versatile heroes who could go into the lane, could go into the jungle even with the Enigma. Because Absolute Legends, they need a mid lane, they need a hard lane or, or a solo laner. Last ban, once again, from AL is going to be the Tinker. Hmm. I don't think that 3D were going to pick up the Tinker. I mean, they need to carry. They definitely need to carry someone to just get <laughs> amplified by the Magnus. Someone for the Shadow Demon to protect. The Tinker is not that type of hero. Magnus will probably go to the mid lane, I want to say. But who am I to argue with Mania? He's been playing this game for a very long time, and I'm sure he knows better than I do. But, yeah, I don't think the Tinker was really high on the list of 3D's priorities. Five seconds. 
last ban is going to be that puck. So getting rid of another mid lane hero, Absolute Legend's going to pick up the Queen of Pain right now. And then 3D going to pick up the Luna. And then Absolute Legend's going to pick up the Bounty Hunter. And then 3D are going to pick up the Undying. I'm just going to, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying. Actually, I have no clue, but AL do need to pick up a mid lane hero, and I don't know why you would pick up any other hero besides Queen of Pain, unless they want to go for their long lane hero right now, which could be an option for them. Ooh, it's going to be the Clockwork. Hmm. So the Clockwork was really, really effective for 3D in game number one. Looks like AL looking to make something uh, similar to that happen in this now game number three. Clockwork will have a lot of initiation, and a lot of counter push from AL is up so far. They also need really the slew of stuns and crowd control effects that Clockwork does offer. It probably is going to be soloing a lane. Can't imagine AI will break up the PL Rubik Keeper tri lane for Ten a Clockwork. Uh, but they still do need that mid lane hero. Clockwork mid lane last, uh, um, sorry, the remaining. first game only really worked because he was up against a solo lane bounty hunter. And that melee versus melee lane, it <laughs> Clockwork is going to have an edge there. But we'll see how AL decides to lane that clockwork. It's really all going to be revealed with their final pick, how they want to lane that. Because clockwork does have the option of going for that hard lane, which is the role that you usually see him in. Sometimes he'll be in an aggressive tri lane with a uh, Bane oh. Elemental. Okay. So you could Dive sleep him and then walk right up and put the cogs down. But it's really usually a side lane solo. Gets on that hard lane. He kind of struggles. He doesn't really thrive in that hard lane like the Darkseer does. But he does get a couple levels of the cogs, keep him relatively safe, and he does okay. Queen of Pain finally picked up, not by the team that I thought was going to pick it up. So now Absolute Legends, they still do need a mid here, although Ten Clockwork can fill that role. And yeah, Five the Queen of Pain pick remaining. for 3D can give them a lot of mobility. They do have a lot of it. And their last pick should be the Life Sealer. Because you get that cleave. Life Sealer isn't banned, unless I'm crazy, which. He's not banned. Uh, you could jump right into the Queen of Pain. You could jump right into the Nature Prophet or the Magnus. And then you have a uh, solid little setup right there. Actually, yeah, that'll be fine. That would be perfectly fine for 3D. I don't know why they would pick up anything else. However, I do kind of hope that they go for a weird hero like Phantom Assassin or something because Empower plus the Cleave on Phantom Assassin means bye bye PL. And bye bye everyone standing behind PL. Oh my god, if they do that, that'll be freaking ridiculous. Please, 3D, let me see something cool. AL, they're taking their time for the last pick. Yes, maybe they don't themselves know what the clockwork is going to be uh, really doing in this game as far as his, the laning is concerned. So, do they want to lane him mid? Do they want to lane him solo? I'm just screaming outside. I hope no one's getting murdered, because then I might be Ten charged with, like, remaining. what is that, like, Good Samaritan laws? If someone's, like, having Five damage inflicted upon remaining. them, then you have an obligation to step in. But I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. And AL, they're going to go for the Chen as their last pick. Mania's Chen last game was extremely effective, but this is going to kind of throw a wrench in their laning just a little bit. I guess it's going to be a dual lane once again from Absolute Legends, Phantom Lancer, Keeper of the Light. I personally don't really like that. I feel like the safe lane would have been very, very, be uh, very, very, very good for the Phantom Lancer and really just remaining. better overall for the entire team. But they're going to Five what looks like remaining. dual lane the Phantom Lancer as well as the Keeper of the Light again. This time it's going to be up against the Queen of Pain. Last time it was up against a Gyrocopter. Queen of Pain should not die to that lane. The burst is pretty high, but she does have that blink, so the right clicks aren't really going to be reliable in sealing the kills after, of course, the nukes fly. But hey, oh, I don't know about that Chen pick. I mean, it worked last game. The healing is really helpful, and the early pushing will be nice as well. Their pushing is decent. They'll have the Keeper of the Light as well as the Rubik to really blast through creep waves and stuff like that. And the Chen creeps the tank. But Ten with this last remaining. pick of the Life Stealer, then the Infest is going to really do wonders Five against Chen's creeps. You instantly Sven take one out of the fight, and Sven, Sven actually is going to be the pickup. Looks like I am wrong. Unfortunately. Actually, no, fortunately, because Life Stealer, although he's a good hero, kind of tired of seeing him. And Sven is a hero that's just a lot more manly. 
I don't even think I have to justify myself when I say that. It's just a fact. If you disagree, then, well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. And Sven is a lot more bursty, whereas Lifestealer can take down a hero within six seconds, uh, within that the duration of his rage. Sven is the type of hero who could kill a hero within one hit with the duration of his sword, especially when the likes of the, the recipients of that sword are going to be the likes of Rubik, Keeper of the Light, and Chen, who are going to be very, very, very dead once Magnus empowers the Sven. And I do like this pickup, actually, not only for the burst damage, but also because Sven has innate cleave of his own. And in case you didn't know, cleave stacks perfectly. So if you have a 65% cleave chance, uh, cleave percentage, I'm sorry, from the Sven, then that's all well and good. 65% plus that additional uh, 50%, yeah, 50%. So that means the cleave is going to be doing 115% to units behind, or, you know, to the cleaved units. So it stacks per perfectly, which is always pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so if you stack like a whole bunch of battle furies, then you will be doing a lot more damage to the enemies behind the target. I don't know how exactly that's supposed to work, but it is in fact how it does work. That means there's even more damage for the Phantom Lancer. The cleave is going to stack up, and whichever illusion he hits, then the all the illusions behind that are going to die. It's going to be really interesting to watch. But I do like the Sven. It's a very good pickup. Has kind of fallen out of favor recently. Right after TI2, he was really the hero that everyone wanted to pick. Uh, but I don't exactly know what happened. I think he got nerfed a little bit with his uh, with his uh, cooldowns or numbers or something like that. Just those small tweaks made him not as desirable. But we're going to be seeing him in this game. Partnered up with the Magnus should be for some good times over who's playing what. On the AL side, we have Miggle on the clockwork. Looks like he's going to be soloing the hard lane. Miracle is mid lane Rubik, so it's not going to be a dual lane. I do like this choice. Rubik mid lane, haven't seen that in a while either. Mania is once again on the Chen. Surprise, surprise, Syndrin's playing the Keeper of the Light once again and hard carrying. Surprise, surprise, it's going to be Unicorn on the PL. On the 3D side, we have Stalianer on the Queen of Pain. Going for a quick bottle with a uh, very stat heavy build opening. Sidoy is heading towards the top lane, it looks like. He's going to be going up against a very unpleasant 2.5 lane, so he is not going to get much done. Probably going to abandon ship and try to jungle at least a little bit. Could be a little bit difficult for him there. Oh, wait, we are missing the most important thing. There we go. And they're off. Uh, Solo is going to be jungling with that Nature Prophet. Two clarities in Ring of Basilius, a true tell of a jungle build. And they're off. And they're off. Uh, Dread is going to be on that Shadow Demon, Haste. supporting... Medved. You know, let's actually take a look at the, if there's something else that you call him, because Medved be just sounds silly. Here we go. Here we go. Hopefully no one's going to get first blood at any time soon. Igor Surkov. Definitely. Yeah, I guess it's that's just who he is. Well, fair enough, then. He's going to be on the Sven, farming the spot lane. You can see Miggle using the cogs twice, I believe hold out this creep wave that is some efficient uh, creep walling right there or uh yeah what do you call it holy crap what do you call it creep blocking that's what you call it very effective from him Cedo on the top lane trying to get a little bit of experience but Syndrin is here to constantly lay down the right click stout shield or no stout shield Magnus is going to take a lot of damage from that does have a lot of restoratives two salves uh, two clarities at <laughs> two tangos as well as a salve However, he can only sit, sit there for so long. Even if Syndrin doesn't get any pulls off, just the constant harassment of Sidoy keeping him off the lane will be enough to kind of make it worth it. Medved taking a cog from Miggle, but he is showing no fear, not even going to move. He's like, yeah, I hit you twice. What are you going to do about it, son? We'll back up. And Sven is just farming this lane. Three for one. Miggle is one for two. Sven not getting the most CS, actually. But he will, I'm sure, recover eventually. He'll be fine to do that. Dread has been pulling this whole time. Miggle going to look to creep Jack a little bit. However, the Shadow Poison is going to start to fly. And the creeps both very weak. Miggle's actually going to be in a little trouble. Solo teleporting in. Doesn't have a sprout, though. There's a war cry as well as the hammer. Miggle in a huge amount of trouble. Now the curse is going to get on him. And oh no, trapped in a cage with Sven. Looks like it's not going to matter because Dread with the stacks of Shadow Poison ultimately does pick up that kill. But AL's Miggle once again dropping first blood as he did the last game. Gonna try to fire off a rocket, but just mostly to get that spell out of there so he could continue regenerating. He's back up at full mana, so why not? But Sven, 
Helping out with that first blood is going to help him a whole lot. Caught in the cogs once again. He doesn't care. He's going to fight Miggle 1v1. Come at me, bro. Don't know why he keeps on standing there after the cogs disappear, but that is certainly happening. And Sven's getting all the farm in the world. Conversely, though, Unicorn is also getting all the farm in the world. Cedoy, I think it was hiding there. He was spotted out if he was, so it's not like it was a huge surprise. Level 2 on this Magnus versus the level 2 on this Clockwork, so the uh, hard lane heroes are pretty much a wash. Miracle versus Stalinator in this mid lane. They're both staying relatively even with one another. Good on Miracle. It's hard to outlane a Queen of Pain. And it's hard to stay e even with the Queen of Pain. Double damage is up on the Queen of Pain, though, so uh, the Rubik has got to be a little bit careful. Level 4 on him. Level 4 on the Queen of Pain. However, the Rubik should have a little bit of an... Uh, I mean, you know, once this double damage is out of the question, of course. So, I guess the adva any advantage that Miracle would have is kind of nullified by the fact that Stalioner does have a double damage, which he's going to pop right now. Try to go for a kill on the Miracle. The Blink forward, he could get it, but the Blink is only level 1, so he does not have that option. Stalioner just forcing that Rubik out of the lane, getting himself a little bit more room and denying a lot of room to the Rubik. He's forced to use his last Tango. does have a bottle charge, however gonna have to rely on the crow to really fill that up because anything else is not gonna happen at all taking heavy damage from that queen of pain rotation from mania attempt to go onto this bot lane sudoi does have level one skewer not the longest range on that but he's also pushing out the wave and he's got to watch out for the smoke gank if that uh, slam or what is it called thunderclap from the hell bear does land then the magnus is pretty much dead because the nukes are going to fly from Sindrin as well. Up oh, now they spot him. They're going to move straight in. Smoke is dispelled. And Sidoy, he doesn't have any mana. Oh, this is horrible for him. The clap is going to happen right now. Do they have enough damage to bring him down? Oh, yes, they do with teleportation coming in. Actually, no, that's 3D's teleportation, forcing Mania back. Blast is going to happen. Sidoy, though, fighting off the bear 1v1. The nuke from Chen is going to get him. But a two-man sprout. Beautiful Dread is going to come in as well. Sindrin's going to fall. Mania is going to fall shortly after. A double kill for Solo. Dread going to get everything he has out onto Unicorn. Lance is going to fly, though. Kill off Dread. No, it's not going to be enough damage. Dread still on the run. Sprout is going to protect him from the Hell Bear. Beautiful play from this Nature Prophet. Solo playing the Nature Prophet strong in game number one and again in game number three. It is going to be a favorable exchange for 3D. Unicorn has not died, but he really didn't get anything out of that. 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Where is the first kill? It was Chen to ultimately get the kill onto that Magnus. So Magnus unfortunately did die, but he stalled long enough for the Nature Prophet to come in, for the Shadow Demon to come in. And with level 3 on that Shadow Poison, the Shadow Demon could put out a lot of hurt. Already 102. So the Shadow Demon has somehow gotten himself a lot of levels, level 5 on him, means that he could actually get solo kills at this point. Actually, no, he can't. Change my mind. Uh, once he gets to level 6, then he could get solo kills, because then he'll have the Demonic Purge to actually keep in range for those poison stacks. But Dread is well on his way to getting up to that point. The experience is being yeah, pretty much led by the Shadow Demon. He for a moment there had more experience than this event, which is pretty insane. Blink forward from Stalioner going to get a sprout from Solo onto Miracle. Shadow Poison gonna fly out as well as the curse. Miracle gonna die once again to the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon 202 carry build. Gonna go for some uh Mjolnir or crit, maybe Shadow Demon. Why not? Wants to stick around for that level six? No he's yeah he's gonna no. He doesn't want level six. He needs that level six. Once he gets at level 6, he gets solo kills on the Rubik, as I said before. The Demonic Purge does a lot of damage and really just buys time for more stacks of Shadow Poison. And Shadow Poison is going to be his priority of things to max. So this Shadow Demon is incredibly dangerous right now. Level 6 on the map, whereas the other supports are level 3, level 4. So we have a level 6 Shadow Demon. Level 4 Magnus, granted, but Nature Prophet has been finding his levels. Almost does have that Hand of Midas up on him. So this Shadow Demon is going to be something to watch out for. Medved has been farming all this time on the bot lane. Takes some pretty heavy damage, but his farm is coming in. Not the most gold per minute, I believe. Yeah, he's actually standing right in the middle. Oh, Miracle in a lot of trouble. So one more scream to Stalioner. Max that out and immediately. He's going to get that kill in solo. Limping away from Mania as well as Sindrin with 40 HP. He's going to get out of there alive. Oh, wait. No, he's not. Clockwork with the Rocket Flare going to kill off the Nature Prophet. Beautiful play from Miggle, but he's going to take a stun from Medved, who just doesn't give a crap. There's Demonic Purge from Dread. Can Dread get this creep, this uh, kill steal? Disruption onto the Sven will buy him enough time to both live and for Dread to get the kill. Shadow Demon carrying it up. I'm telling you, even though Sven pretty much set all of that up, it was 
I'm gonna say it was all the uh, the shadow demon right there. And there's not gonna be any rocket flare because Medved gonna stick onto this bot lane. Gonna go for hand of Midas. Should be an eight minute Midas. He could get it right now. So yeah, seven fifteen on that Midas. Pretty good on this Ven. However, uh, the Phantom Lancer could have had the Midas as well. However, he's choosing not to go for that. 1800 gold on him. Might be seeing a very quick defusal blade out of this PL, and the Mana Burn is going to be so very useful for that spend. Another stun onto Miggle. Shadow Poison starting to stack up. Teleportation coming in as well. Hookshot in melee range. Going to stun the uh, Sven just a little bit more. Two stacks of Shadow Poison. Needs one more. That'll kill him off. The stun is not in time. The Shadow Poison going to fly out one more, but it's not going to be in time. Solo is going to run yeah, straight into Syndrin. This is not a fight that Syndrin wants now. to take. Solo has a lot more damage. Sprout, not going to happen. He still wants to go for Miggle. He is going to land it. But to what end? Sion going to blink forward. No, he's going to get telekinesis by Miracle. Holding him out for just a little bit more. He's going to blink forward instead. Go for that Rubik. And wow, it is going to be... What? Clockwork and Rubik. What? What? How did... What? Dread, you kill stealing master. <laughs> Look at that. I don't know. Was there a stack of shadow poison on him or something? There must have been. I didn't see it fly out. That is amazing. Tread is 502. He's killing everybody. Arcane boots. This is how I play Fan uh, Shadow Demon. I just go around, intentionally get the kills, and then somehow my teammates just don't carry the game. And I'm like, what the hell, guys? I'm doing so well. Why don't you keep up? Get on my level. Stallion is going to feel a little bit bummed about that. He burned everything on Miracle, and he didn't get it. That kind of sucks. But at the same time, Shadow Demon, involved in 7 out of the 8 kills, wants more blood on this top lane. Sidoy on this top lane. Level 5, so he's almost at his reverse polarity. Although, they're going to have to deal with Phantom Lancer who now has drums, I bet. No, it's going to be a straight up Yasha. Get a little more movement speed. Mania. You get spotted out by Sidoy. But really, the powerhouse of the Shadow Demon is coming in. Everybody watch yourselves because this guy is going to wreck fools. There's the Demonic Purge and the Shadow Poison is going to start to stack up. Unicorn already taking one disruption as well. Curse is going to land and Shockwave, Shadow Poison tick. Shadow Demon getting another kill. Mane is going to come in straight away. Sidoy is going to try to skewer him back. Dread is still here though with the Shadow Poison stack. Sidoy can turn around for Shockwave. He didn't kill by Mane in the back end, but it's going to be Queen of Pain who actually steals the kill. So finally getting some revenge, sweet revenge from the Queen of Pain versus his ally, and he wants more. He has that haste rune. Could he possibly go for the Keeper of the Light? Keeper of the Light is incredibly weak. Oh, Shadow Poison's trying to spot them out. Dread actually just holding that Hellbear in... Uh, what? Dropping scrolls or whatever. But Dread, 603, involves in 9 of the 10 kills. Carry Shadow Demon. Teleport to this mid lane as Solo's trying to push that out. There's going to be Unicorn pushing up the Keeper of the Light... Uh, the Nature Prophet, I'm sorry. Does have the Clockwork hook shotting in. Solo in a lot of trouble. Cogs? No, there's no mana for Cogs. Solo is going to get a self sprout. Disrupted? No, what are you doing, Dread? You... <laughs> He could have gotten out, but oh, he's going to get out anyway. One stack of Shadow Poison on each of them. Miggle, is he going to pop to the Shadow Poison? Please say yes. Please say yes. Oh, you know, hand of God. Chen, why you got to be like this? Stallion are going to blink in and kill the Clockwork. Now Miracle going to come in with a huge nuke. Actually stole the screen of pain. And Stallion, without any mana, is going to drop. No cooldowns, actually. Level 10 on him. The blink is not in high enough level to actually get out of there. If it was one more level higher, he would have been fine. But Dread still <laughs> remaining active in the map. This guy, like, MVP, Killsteel and Masta, this is why you get Shadow Poison, man. Shadow Poison does a lot of damage. That's what makes solo Shadow Demon work, in case you were wondering. Because Shadow Poison, once you hit that level 6, you can stack up two stacks, get that Disruption, Curse, and then once they pop out, you purge them, and then all the while you're stacking Shadow Poison. That's enough to pop people 100 to 0. It's fun. It is so fun. Unfortunately, when you pick Shadow Demon in pub games, no one actually lets you do it. Because they're like, hey, Shadow Demon... I'm going to go pick a carry. And then you have four carries on your team, and it's a mess. It's just really, really bad. But Dread is moving once again onto this top lane. Has himself a personal smoke. Going to run straight into Mania. Here we go. Rumble between the Creeps and Dread. Teleport coming in from Solo. Going to help up Sidoy. But Syndrome, I don't know what he's doing here. They're actually trying to go for Unicorn, but he's very, very healthy. Syndrome's going to try to arm a cannon blast. Self disruption from Dread. It is going to be enough to kill. Uh, buy enough time to kill off Keeper Light. Solo is going to run away. And a two man verse polarity. Going to catch Unicorn as well as Mania stacking that Shadow Poison continuously. Solo going to try to teleport out the Hookshot. Dread takes it like a man. What a boss. Standing right in the way of the Hookshot. I'll take a bullet for you any day. Mania is very low, as is Unicorn. Miggle is unfortunately unable to steal the kill onto Dread or Sidoy. And wow, that hookshot just saved Nature Prophet's ass. I gotta say, I was like more interested in the fact that Dread was uh, getting all the kills. 
But now it's just like he's playing well overall. He got the disruption onto the target that mattered, and Sudoi also helping out incredibly well with that uh, reverse polarity. But standing perfectly in line so that the hook shot took him instead of the Nature Prophet, that would have been the death of the Nature Prophet, but no. Shadow Demon took the bullet, protected the president, and he's going to get a Medal of Honor or something. I don't actually think you get a Medal of the Medal of Honor. Yeah, he was in, he was in war. You get a Medal of Honor from that, right? Yeah, so that's going to that's gonna go to the Shadow Demon. Really, uh, the early game is going for the 3D clan, not really what you would expect from AL's lineup. They have like four supreme early game heroes, Chen being one of them, Rubik Keeper, as well as Clockwork, huge early game powerhouses. And like the Magnus, he's he has a shockwave, but that's pretty much it. Sven has a stun, that's pretty much it. Queen of Pain, Shadow Demon, and Nature Prophet to some extent. But the early game really should be in favor of AL, but 12 to 4 is the advantage for 3D. And they, mid -tower most importantly, do have a Sven farming this entire time. Level 3 on the cleave, now level 4. The Phantom Lancer, even if he does get his Illusion Army going, it's not really going to be enough. Because he's going to have to face up against the Sonic Wave, Scream Pain, and stacks of Shadow Poison. That's right. Sindrin, a little bit of trouble. Stalyoner does have enough burst damage to kill off his Keeper of Light. 100 to 0, I believe. But it's just going to be a push into this top lane tower. Unicorn going to move in with a couple of Illusions, and they're going to back off. We have the bot lane. Sven gets killed by a hook shot. No, it's not even a hook shot. No, there's the hook shot. You're gonna catch Solo. Solo is not gonna be able to TP out of this. The mini stuns are gonna wall him off from that. Sprout can delay Miracle just a little bit. Solo on the run. Needs opportunity to teleport out. Where is it gonna be? It's not gonna be in time. Miggle doesn't have any mana. Hand of God gonna fly out in the meantime there's a game on the top lane. Let's watch that one instead because Stalyoner and Dread are here. Unicorn is gonna take a curse. There's the dust flying out, and Unicorn in a lot of trouble. He's gonna get nuked down instantly. Dread self-disrupting a little bit too late. Didn't save himself from the damage, but he's gonna save himself from the Seder Blast. And Dread, run, Dread! You cannot die from this one. 46 HP, Stalyoner. I don't care if you die because you have already taken all the kills. But Dread is going to survive once more. In the meantime, Solo has gone down on the spot lane. But 15 for 7. Magnus. Hold on to that reverse polarity and Dread still getting the kills. 13, so he's only involved in uh, 13 of the 15 kills, so he's kind of slipping. But still, he's uh, pretty much bossing it up. You can't really play more boss than he is right now. Warriors of the wood. Headbed still farming on spot lane. Did die to that uh, two man gank telekinesis plus that clockwork stun. Did wall him out and did kill him off. The rest of his team is holding down the fort, so he has a lot more time being given to him by the actions of his team. Tower in the spot lane, very, very close to being denied. However, I think Solo, if he just dips in for just a little bit, they could bull down, bulldoze down this tower, even though Keeper Light is here. The Treants will take a nuke to the face, but they won't really care. Two-man smoke now, Dread, as well as Cedar are going to head up towards Stalyana, where he is spotting out for Mania, as well as Miracle. He can kill them both, although there is a storm hammer stolen, so he's got to watch out. Where's the angle? There it is. The skewer in, plus reverse polarity. Going to pop Rubik Im immediately. Mania also going to drop two Stalyana to the creeps. Doing a little bit of damage, but he should be just fine. Screw pain, killing off all of the creeps. And one kill goes to the Magnus. One kill goes to the Queen of Pain. They're going to just walk right on out of there. Reverse polarity used for two kills. Very much so worth it, even though it is the two supports who... Or, I guess, two of the supports really don't have many levels up on them. There's just more gold for the Queen of Pain, who's going for her Orchid, so she's going to be able to solo assassinate people. I think she already can. I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure she can. She is. She definitely can. And the Blink, it's level 3 Shadow Strike, Scream of Pain, then a Sonic Wave. Once you combine that with the Orchid, that means she could go for a Phantom Lancer kill all solo. Blink him, Silence, Unleash your Payload, Phantom Lancer is pretty much dead with only 900 HP. He's holding a Bracer and Yasha, but that's really it. His farm has ceased pretty much completely since that early stage of the game. And now 3D, once again, the gold per minute is reflecting their advantage right now. Oh, Miggle going to get trapped in a cage with Solo. Sudoi going to try to get close enough, but no, it's actually going to be Medved. Providing a hook target for Miggle to get out of there, but not in time. The Telekin is going to hold Medved out just a little bit more, but he's going to pop off that war cry. going to go for Miracle, dive the tower because you're a baller. Shadow Demon getting a double kill again. Sudoi going to keep going for Sindrin. Do they have another Sprout? Yes, they do, but it's not in range. The tower is going to drop. Fortification actually slowing them down. Sindrin is going to get nuked very heavily. Sprout as well. He's bringing in support. It's going to be Unicorn. The Keeper Blast does kill off one. Medved going to come right back in for Unicorn. Dread is here. Going to get the curse as well as that dust onto Unicorn. Demonic Purge. No disruption is going to be what sets up first. Shadow Poison continuing to fly out. Unicorn taking a lot of damage from this. He'll take a lot more once these Shadow Poison ticks pop. This might be enough to kill him off. Dread, go mad mode. 
man mode. Oh no! Once again, another this defensive sprout saving dread. Medved also gets out of there alive. Beautiful play from this nature prophet. Miggle wants in. He's not gonna make it happen. Teleport out has happened from dread. Medved doesn't have any mana though, so he's probably gonna die to this one. Trapped in the cogs. Just wants to use his hand of minus. Does the nail the Chen creep. Sonic wave from Stallioner as. One Miggle is going to get sent back to the base, but Mania all alone, out of mana. He's going to die in a corner, alone and unhappy. Skewer forward, killing every single tree in the friggin' forest. And Chen does die. 21 for 9. And once again, the Shadow Demon lives. I don't know how he's doing it. I really don't. I wish I knew. Because then I'll be doing it every single game. But now with a four staff, this Shadow Demon is an absolute terror. You saw how much damage it did to Phantom Lancer. Granted, Phantom Lancer doesn't have the most health. It was still like that was some pretty intense damage <laughs> he continued to do that he's not really going to get that much stronger from here on out however AL they're not really becoming strong at a fast enough rate and here we go Dread solo kill time oh come on oh wait invisibility rune is set up that's your soul oh come on ah oh, Dread you're killing me man Radiance mid come on come on up. get it together but yeah 3D clan very very much so ahead 12 thousand in favor both golden experience we'll push onto this bot lane tower it's gonna take Sindrin as well as miracle both stand on down here and try to defend it Sindrin's in a lot of trouble though if he gets spotted out for just a second oh it's gonna be a sprout into miracle curse on him silenced as well miggle is gonna get nuked by stallion very very hard no sonic wave but the shadow poison will kill him off it's actually solo with the right clicks that takes the kill Free kill on the clockwork and Nature Prophet just gonna go back for some mana. Gonna come back in relatively short order in the meantime. Bot lane, Medved gonna try to work down Unicorn Prefer. He himself does go down. He's gonna make it out with 160 HP. And here comes the baller. Dread is going to try to go for the Chen. In the meantime, Unicorn did get sent back to the base. Shadow Poison is tracking him up. Teleportation support coming in once more time. It's gonna be solo. Does have teleportation in three, two, one. If you teleport right here, you should be fine. No mania can teleport out of there. No disruption onto this. Chen does escape after sending the Phantom Lancer back to the base as well. Oh, beautiful silence from the Queen of Pain. A little bit, uh, maybe get a new mouse so that doesn't happen. But, uh, yeah, Unicorn is starting to head towards his Diffusal Blade. I feel like if he just rushed it straight off, he would have been a lot more effective. Yes, Yasha does give a lot of agility. The movement speed also very much worth it. But the mana burn is just invaluable, especially um, considering how many times everyone has gotten away with, like, 100 HP. If you had mana burn on your phantom on your spirit lance illusions, that would have been enough to kill them, pretty much guaranteed. But he instead went for Yasha, blink daggers for everyone apparently. Magnus as well as Rubik picking their those up, so Magnus is going to have an easier time setting up for that verse polarity, which has already been pretty good so far. He's been landing verse polarities on one and two constantly, and every time he does it results in a kill. And really, he hasn't been an opportunity where he's like, "crap, I wish I had my ultimate." He's been using it incredibly well. Unicorn in the spot lane. Could he get silenced this time? Now instant doppel walk as soon as he sees the Queen of Pain. And now Queen of Pain in a little bit of trouble because there are a lot of heroes down in the spot lane. Miggle looking for that hook shot in. And if they can get that, follow it up with a little bit of a telekinesis. The burst damage should be enough. Here it goes. They're going to go in. There's the lift on Stalyana. Going to pull him back. Is there another stun? There is not need for another stun. This Queen of Pain gets annihilated with the burst damage. Beautiful initiation from Miracle. He keep doing that pretty much onto everyone except for Dread, who you just can't kill no matter how hard you try. On the top lane, Unicorn has teleported up here. He's going to try to defend this push from Solo, but he's pushing pretty aggressively, and this push is not going to be stopped unless AL all teleport right now. No fortification available. H Profit gets another tower kill down for 3D. Two more tier 2s remain for AL. But really, all the tier 1s remain for 3D. This one hardly even got touched. It's like a couple of scratches. You could probably buff that out. Trouble brewing every Teleportation down to this bot lane. They're going to defend all of their tier 1 towers. AL being choked for gold. And really, there's nothing that they could do about it. They don't really have the pushing. Mania can't get a creep wave, uh, a creep army that's really big enough because they keep on dying every single fight. There's so much AoE on the 3D side that they don't really care who their spells hit because they're going to hit you regardless. Miggle going to get silenced. The Stallioner unfortunately blinked a little bit too far away. Oh, blink forward and skewer Miggle back to the cage. The cage is going to set one up for 3D. They're going to all get hit by a shockwave from Miracle. But they're just going to chill there for just a little bit more because why not? You don't want to attack those cogs. They might hurt you. Clockwork gets picked off once again in the mid lane. In the meantime, we have Unicorn pushing out the top lane and and the Sven pushing out the bot lane. Sven really hasn't been all that useful for the team. His gold per minute still... It's actually pretty high now. 
But still, I feel like he should have a little bit more. He's going for like a whole bunch of different items, but not really any real items. So he has like a whole bunch of components with that Morbid Mask and Ogre Club. He's like, I want to go for Mask of Madness BKB. And I want to make sure I get him at the same time. Gonna go for Mania now. Teleportation support is coming in. However, the Centaur is forming a wall. Medvig gonna get completely chained stunned. Hannah Midas does kill off one. However, he's, he's gonna make it out alive. Mania taking a lot of damage from Solo. In the meantime, Stallion as well as Sedoi trying to kill off Syndrome. They will have enough damage to do so. Solo coming right in, killing that uh, hero off. Solo though. Pop off that mech and he's gonna try to go for the Chen, which does drop in the end. Medved on the run from the Clockwork Goblin should drop to this one. He will. And Syndrin buying back in, teleporting back in. He's going to drop a second time. Jumps onto Miggle. He's gonna get Demonic Purge as well. Dread wants blood and he's gonna get blood. Three stacks of that sh Shadow Poison. Pop goes the Weasel and Clockwork does die. 28 to 11 and AL with only Unicorn surviving that one. Very vicious fight with 3D coming in on both sides. Medved tanking everything that he possibly can. Gonna set him back once more from his BKB. But really, he doesn't need his BKB. He, they don't really need someone to be doing the damage because they have enough damage. Queen of Pain is doing all the work. The Magnus uses a reverse polarity there as well. Gonna head straight towards a refresher orb. And then, of course, you have the carry Shadow Demon, which is doing more than anyone else because he's the carry Shadow Demon. So, AL. They're going to look to tr tr finally try to take this tier 1 tower. They should be able to get it too. Unicorn is still around. It's here. Oh no, teleportation coming in. It's going to be the Sven. You got to run, man, because this cleave is going to mess up your illusion. So with no mana burn, the Sven can just sit there and fight. Tower. What a tragic thing to see. Gonna get denied. Actually, they took out to the top. I don't know when that happened. Oh, Miracle. Gonna try to get a kill on Stallion, but he's going to blink away straight away. Bottling up. He should be just fine. Teleportation support coming in. Solo's gonna get that mech and Stallion her pack up to nearly full health. Unicorn on the sidelines. Miracle looking. Miggle, I'm sorry. Looking for a hook shot opening. Gonna spot off the Queen of Pain. There he is. There he is. Nope. Queen of Pain gonna blink forward. Kill off Syndrome immediately. Doesn't have another blink. He's gonna get hook shotted back to Sidor. Does he have reverse polarity? He does not. I'm not gonna cast it, actually. He does. Gonna try to secure himself in. Gonna get a reverse polarity on two. Shadow Poison can do a little bit of damage. Diamond are gonna set up for a perfect Sonic Wave onto both of them. Unicorn takes some heavy damage. Med Medved, here he comes. Gonna kill off one. Gonna kill off another with one more hit. Sent back to the base is the Rubik as well as the Clockwork. But in the end, it's still a one for three trade. Sven coming in with the big damage. Not, you don't even need items. Really, you don't. Because the Sonic Wave was there from Stallion Hunter. And really, what could you do as AL? Aside from, like, try to not take those kills. But Cinder getting picked off so many times. 273 on him. The counter push just simply isn't there. They're just going to keep on going for this. Stallion are going to get lifted up into the air. Take a little bit of damage from the Illuminate as well. Sprout. Create some creeps and Miggle on the front lines. Can try to cog it up, but he's just going to take Stormhammer to the face. Doesn't really care. Going to get Hex as well. Lots of AoE flying out, but really the creep wave is all still alive, which is the important thing. Stylander going to blink straight in, going to go for Miracle. He's going to pop from this one. All the right clicks will do the job. Stylander just holding his ground. Syndrome now on the run, going to pop off a mech or magic stick charger or something. He's going to survive. But still two down for AL. They need Unicorn if they're going to fight this, because he's their most consistent form of damage. But the tower is slowly getting dropped down. Illuminate going to fly out once again. Looks like 3D. They have to fall back, at least for now. But 32 to 13. BKB up on Sven. He's going to head towards a Mask of Madness, I feel. I mean, huge, huge advantage for 3D. Sven finally getting his items as well as gold up. Roshan is now going to be the target of choice. Medved probably going to drop that TP scroll. Going to get himself a double life. Really, what could AL do about this? Their Phantom Lancer is still getting pretty big. He's heading towards the Yasha. He almost is at that ultimate orb. Once he has that, he's going to have to deal with the Sven with, uh, yeah, maxed out Empower, maxed out Cleave. That is a ton of Cleave damage, and these illusions aren't going to last at all. So i got to keep my eyes out from the Sven, because I want to see one it kills. He doesn't have crit yet, so I don't think that's actually going to happen, but he still does do a lot of damage. Last tier 2 tower that AL owned, and it's going to drop to the Sven. They're going to keep going in. They have a Blink Dagger as well as Reverse Polarity. Double life on the Queen of Pain, actually. They have the Hex as well. Unfortunately, the Mega Range keeps getting pushed back, zapped by the freaking cogs. What got stolen? Shockwave got stolen by Rubik. He wants that reverse polarity. He's not going to find a Stallion. going to blink straight in for Miracle. Get the nuke damage. Should be enough. Yes, the Sonic Wave will kill him off. Yes, there it goes. Popping off with that Orchid. Sedoi still looking for reverse polarity. Opportunity. Going to get it. Both onto Mega as well as Mania. Cleave, cleave, cleave. And they're both dead. Unicorn and Syndrome are the only ones alive. Bot lane is pretty much fully breached right now. There's not many creeps here. However, Nature Prophet can 
you know, make that chain relatively quickly. Now the God Strength still up on the Sven, doing some heavy damage to that tower. Syndrome as well as Unicorn, both being a little bit annoying, but there goes one. Keeper of the Light not standing a chance. Stalliano with the haste rune can run himself out of there. There's the Lincoln Sphere as well, and the Aegis is on top of that. So he's going to be completely fine to sit here all day and just you know, continue to push in. Fed on the run, however, he is uh, kind of out of mana and out of health, so he might want to consider falling back, but the Raxes are in danger. Unicorn just poking and prodding as much as he can with the Spirit Lands, but he only has one left, and if he does cast, he won't have enough for a Doppelwalk. There it goes, and now he has to go and heal. Stalin are going to blink forward. He's going to get as much damage as he can. However, Mania and Miracle both still alive, or uh, both resurrected, I'm sorry. Shockwave is going to fly out onto Miracle. Stalin are going to hold his ground. He is fearless right now. He has the Aegis. He doesn't really care. Hookshot, where's the hookshot? Miggle looking for it. He's going to try to hunt down Solo. Solo could get a sprout right now. Is not in time. The cogs are going to fly, and Miggle is trapped, though. He's going to get Silence as well as a Sonic uh, Scream of Pain. Silent doing heavy damage. Solo is still alive in those cogs. He's going to push back. He's going to kill off Miracle. The mischance. The mischance. Miracle versus Solo. Miracle's going to live. However, Stallion is going to swoop right in to kill them both. Hookshot is going to bring the Aegis off the Queen of Pain. But even if all this happens, it doesn't really. Oh, Miracle. One more Shadow Poison. Yes. Oh my god, that was so baller. Dread. Dread, you crazy man. 11 0 16. I, I haven't even been watching the Shadow Team anymore, but holy crap, Shadow Team, man. Bot lane completely carved out from AL, and everyone from 3D, they're still very, very much alive and active. This new lineup for 3D is looking incredibly powerful. I like it. I've got to say, I like it. Old Moscow 5, pretty much back in full form and Moscow 5 before they disbanded they were still a really powerful team they were capable of taking games off of pretty much anyone not too sure about this uh, hard carry player though not too sure we'll see we'll see Sven so far hasn't really been pulling his weight even though he does have a lot of farm he has a BKB up but that's pretty much it the hand of Midas you would expect a lot more than BKB he had a free lane pretty much the entire game. I don't know. I don't know. Queen of Pain in the meantime, killing off Cinder once again. Blocking off that Spirit Lance with that Lincoln Sphere. To the bottom lane, getting a little bit of pressure from the Phantom Lancer, but not enough pressure. Miggle gonna hook shot in, now he's gonna get caught out. There's the disruption onto Phantom Lancer. Now the Phantom Lancer illusions are on the other end. Shockwave gonna fly through, plus Stallioner's nuke damage and kill off the Phantom Lancer. You don't even need to micro those disruption illusions. You don't need to do that. Oh, they're gonna go for Miggle. Trying to pop off that uh, Ghost Scepter, but the GG has already been called. Miggle run! Miracle run! Oh, it's a race to see who dies. Oh, hook shot! Spider Man is in the house, and he's gonna survive, but GG is the call. Fortitude for 17. Everyone from AL, they're leaving. Miggle gonna trap Mania in a cog trap. Shockwave gonna kill them off. Really, MVP Dread. Freaking Reaver. They go Satanic on the Shadow Demon. Oh, God, Reverse Polarity screwing them out. That's just cruel. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? AL. Miggle, fight your way out. You have a lot of gold now since all your teammates left. You can just sell everything and then get the Vine Rapier or two. Even though you can't really get out of his base. So that's going to be it, guys. 3D taking games 1 and 3. Game number 3 in pretty much dominating fashion. Big plays from the Nature Prophet. Big plays from the Shadow Demon. Really, what more is there to say? That's going to be it, guys. Moving on to the next set, which I believe is going to be between Fnatic and VP. I'm not sure. I just had a glimpse of it, so I didn't really look at it. Oh, wait. Unicorn going to rally. Burning out the mana from Magnus. Oh, Miggle going to kill him off. Hookshot. Hookshot. Silence. <laughs> oh, Miggle. He still wants it. Here he goes. Oh, nailed him. Got him. Now you're on the run. Solo. Yeah. Miggle, he knows that he did well, but, you know, that was just that hook shot. So, I think I am just going to speed this up because nothing is actually happening. Come on, Miggle, just leave, just leave, just leave. Really? You're gonna... Are you kidding? There we go, finally. Thanks for watching, guys. AL versus 3D does go to 3D with a 2-1 to one victory. We're going to be moving on to the next set, probably tomorrow, I'd say. Oh, okay, no score screen, I guess. We could just do this. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this cast, like, subscribe. If you didn't, let me know what I can do better. Other than that, GG.